Kirby isn't a franchise that I've really played much of in my life. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you which ones I've played outside of Nightmare and Dreamland, if any. I've always liked the characters and world of Kirby, but for whatever reason I just kind of push it off to the side while I played the more predominant IPs in Nintendo's lineup. But when Kirby in the Forgotten Land was first revealed, and it showed a new direction for the franchise, it genuinely got me intrigued, and I was especially drawn to the Mario 3D world vibes that I was getting, which is one of my favorite games on the Wii U. Given how creative the copy ability system was, I thought that this would be a perfect formula to combine with clever level design to create a really immersive gameplay experience. And wow, I was totally right. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is the most fun game that I've played in the last several years. From start to finish, I had an absolute blast and was constantly impressed by its creativity, charm, world, music, and just the pure feeling of joy that I had throughout. There's just so many areas of this game that shine, it would actually be quicker to discuss what I didn't like because going over everything good could take an entire day. For starters, it's just oozing with charm and personality. If you don't have a gigantic smile on your face the entire time while playing this game, then you are literally incapable of feeling positive human emotion. From Kirby to the side characters to mouthful mode to the environments, it all took the best of the Kirby charm and amplified it. This is one of the best looking games on Switch, both graphically and in terms of its art style. And all the good that you see visually and feel emotionally, you'll also find in the gameplay. When it comes to 3D platformers, the two main things I look for is character functionality and level design. Bonus points if you can successfully combine the abilities of your main character with interesting and clever traversal throughout the levels, and Kirby completely nailed this through both copy abilities and mouthful mode. There were so many fun and refreshing segments where you would go on a racetrack, or have a Star Fox style flight simulation, or find a mini game that focused on a specific ability. It really did a fantastic job of dividing up the gameplay variety in the levels, while still feeling smooth with its transitions. Combine this with even more gameplay elements like the rare stones, different things to do in town like fish and cook, and going back to each level to get all the collectibles, and you'll find that there's plenty to do in this game, without an overabundance of elements that aren't as fun individually. Everything has its place, and as I discovered everything you can do, I immediately found myself wanting to try each new thing. I like the world itself too, this forgotten society that has been overgrown and kind of preserved in time. You can find remains of a civilization here throughout, and I especially love the amusement park theme where you have all these creepy house of horror type places that have become inhabited by ghosts. It was really fun to explore, and I thought the light bulb was really funny as well. There's all these wanted posters hanging around to remind you that Kirby isn't welcome here, and it just adds a lot to a game where the story elements really aren't a focus at all. It told its story mostly through gameplay, and while they did try to do some story stuff toward the end, it really wasn't a concern of mine when I had such great gameplay in front of me. And it's not like I went into a Kirby game expecting a deep and epic story anyways. I couldn't care less about that in games like this, so the lack of story in this game wasn't a big deal for me. The music in this game is incredible as well. To open, you get this joyful, uplifting, anime type of opening with a great track. Kirby is feeling it. You get into the mood to have an adventure with the pink puffball. And then it just continues to drop absolute heat for the entire game. As far as copy abilities go, they were awesome. And I loved how you could find new blueprints to make your favorites even stronger. Some were just absolutely broken in their third form. My personal favorite was the Dragonfire. It was so cool to fly around like that, and having unlimited flame breath wasn't a bad deal either. It was always fun to see what each upgrade was capable of, and I enjoyed trying each new upgrade at least once in a level, because they were all solid. Again, just awesome creativity here to really make this as fun and immersive as possible. When I first played the demo, I had a blast and loved what I was seeing, but my main concern was whether the game would be too easy to enjoy. However, once I played the full game, I found that even if the main levels weren't the hardest, and the bosses were pretty easy as well, the challenge in this game came through finding all the collectibles and hitting the target times in the rare stone events. This is really where the game featured its gamer moments per se, and I can't lie, a few of these rare stones legitimately frustrated me and took me several times to get the target time. So there's definitely a challenge, and I like that it's more of just a pride thing mostly, while other players can just focus on enjoying the main game. If I could point out any flaws with this game, I have two. I noticed that there's frame drops throughout, 
but that's more on the Switch hardware, so I can't really knock it too much. Really, my only critique is that the boss arenas are pretty boring, and I think they could have made more immersive fights with mouthful mode and using your environment like how they did with the level designs. The bosses themselves were cool, but I think the fights could have been a bit more interactive considering how well the rest of the game does it. Overall, those things maybe take half a point off my critical score, giving this game a 9.5 out of 10, but in my personal experience, it was an absolute 10 out of 10 for me. I can't recommend this game enough, and it will be a contender for best Nintendo game of 2022. Let me know your thoughts on Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day, deuces! Really don't know what Sakurai was thinking when he designed this short hop nair. This move is broken.